be your own advocate. Question everything. At some point, every one of us will face a medical dilemma, whether it's weighing the pros and cons of a particular drug or deciding where to have life-saving surgery. We do better if we come to the table prepared with information that every patient should know. Staying healthy is a challenge that takes eating right, exercising, trying to work on diet, and talking to your doctor. Is this something I should do on my own from time to time? It gets confusing. There's so much about the healthcare system that's very complicated. Complicated for you and your doctor. I checked every page of your chart. But there are ways you can manage your end of the healthcare equation better, whether your problems are routine or life-threatening. They tell you to get there 15 minutes early, and then you wait for like 45. It's called the waiting room for good reason. You never know how long it's going to be. But smart scheduling takes waiting off your list of complaints. In general, uh, offices are busier on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays. First, schedule your appointment for a Wednesday or Thursday morning. Second, ask the receptionist beforehand how much time you'll have with the doctor. They arrive for a doctor's appointment not realizing that they only have 15 minutes and they have 15 problems. Who did you see today, Vivian? If you need more time, Dr. make two appointments. Robert. Finally, arrive prepared with a list of questions and printouts of Internet articles you want to ask about. An educated patient coming to the doctor saying, you know, here's what I've read, T tell him what to think of this. The doctor often can put things in perspective. It's especially important when facing a major medical crisis. If you feel like the doctor was telling you what to do instead of helping you make an informed decision, those are some signs where it may not be the best relationship for you. He had me up sitting on the examining table and I'm just sitting there and he looks around and he goes, you don't know how serious this is, do you? And I said, well, I, I think I do. And he goes, no, you don't. He says, you've got a year to live. Roger Stump heard those words four years ago from a specialist he went to for pancreatic cancer. And I looked at him and I said, I'm going to live from it. I'm going to live through this. But to do that, Roger had to fire that doctor and search for another, a mind-boggling process that's only recently become a little bit easier. You could get information about where you would go to have dinner at a restaurant uh, or what kind of car you might purchase. Uh, but in the healthcare industry, that was not available. Reacting to consumer demands, the federal government finally launched Hospital Compare, a website that allows you to evaluate hospitals, nursing homes, and other care facilities. It's a one resource among many resources that they should use, again, in deciding where they will seek care. The website provides statistics on how often a hospital follows standard practices, something called process of care, for example. Patients who are going to have surgery uh, should have uh, antibiotics given to them just prior to surgery. Information is also available on outcomes. How good is the survival rate for a group of patients who are treated for that condition? It also suggests specific questions you should ask your doctors. Hospital Compare is part of a growing healthcare trend. I've seen a phenomenal change over the last three to five years uh, in all providers being willing to submit data that measures the quality of care. But we're not 100% there. Hospital Compare doesn't yet provide data on all conditions, cancer among them. The information would have been very helpful to me. Survival statistics are available through the SEER program of the National Cancer Institute and through the National Cancer Database, but it's statistical mumbo jumbo for a patient in crisis. This sort of database does not provide information on cancer treatment center outcomes that are specifically linked to an individual center. So it's difficult for patients to use that information. Hospitals themselves provide access to some information. For example, Sloan Kettering and the Abramson Cancer Center at the University of Pennsylvania have extensive websites aimed at helping people with cancer make treatment choices. At the Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center at the University of Miami, you can access a registry with statistics on the cancer they treat. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is currently making outcome data available on pancreatic, breast, and lung cancer. Advocacy groups also provide valuable support, teaming newly diagnosed patients with survivors who know what to ask doctors. First thing I'll say is, ask the guy how many people with stage 4 pancreatic cancer have you helped, and how long have they lived? 
it's rare to survive advanced pancreatic cancer, a fact not lost on Roger, who has lived well beyond the death sentence he first received. Every day is so much more precious. Um, God is good.